Okay, cafe ride time. Wednesday, 10 a.m., mountain time. It's exciting. Uh, Lara King will be joining us today. Um, it'll probably take us, oh, there's Lara. Um, hopefully she'll just be able to request to join. Um, and it never works on time, but it never works. We're gonna try. Let's have a gander. All right, Laura, we have requested your presence. I think you're here. I'm hey, here. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, where am I? I am um, at my friend's house. So there are three dogs that I know are really excited to bark um, or play near me. So. Um, where are you at? What are you doing? I know you just got back from vacation. Just got back from vacation. I actually am in a quiet house right now, which is really nice. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, that's so nice. Mine's mm. quiet right now, but I guarantee you, it, as soon as I start recording anything, I just know someone is just waiting. Um, that's how but, it goes. Yeah, thank well, you usually, so much. Usually it's pretty lively. We have um, a friend who watches our daughter and she has a seven and a nine year old. So they all come over and there's just like stomping and running and a lot of fun commotion happening most of the time, but they're out uh, hiking and going to the river. Nice. And you're in Vermont right now. Yes. Sorry. Uh, okay. Just outside of Burlington, Vermont. Nice. That's so exciting. Um, <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining uh, on the cafe ride. Um, I, you know, obviously this is all about you, uh, and your story. And I think, you know, to give everyone like a little idea, like we'll, we'll have you turn it over how you're, how you've gotten into cycling and your experience. And then kind of, I would love to kind of transition into talking about how you have created, you know, this family, you know, you have a family and, you know, cycling and still being super active is a really big priority but also being like a mom and just like also having just like independence is also still a priority so I would just love to chat about that um and hear kind of how you balance everything um because it's a super hard thing to balance so yeah, yeah if you want to take it away how you got into the cycling world um and kind of where you're at now because you've you've been in the, this world for a while yeah I have well Let's see, um, uh, oh, wait, I guess like 15 to 20 years ago, I kind of started my endurance sport journey. I was a competitive swimmer. And when my competitive swimming days were coming to an end, I thought I was gonna swim in college and kind of a long story and I ended up not. And I didn't know how to fill my day without, you know, just being used to the two to four hours of endurance exercise that I was kind of addicted to by that point. I just, yes. it, was, um, it was something that I, for, I was a, a, a serious musician. Um, I played the flute. What? Okay. I was gonna say what instrument? Yeah. Yeah. I played the flute. Um, <laughs> and for a long time, I thought my dream was to go to Juilliard and be playing in a no way. Theater. Um, but that was until I discovered swimming and endurance sport. And I really felt like I found my people there and I really kind of filled my, my cup. It was like, it really, it fulfilled me more than music did. So it slowly yes. but surely started to um, take over and music kind of took more and more of a backseat. Um, and so when I was looking to fill my time, um, I was just, at the University of Washington and a friend of mine, we met on, I joined a master swim team because okay. when you're done with swimming, that's kind of what you do. Even if you're only <laughs> 18, you join a master <laughs> team. That's incredible. Um, and I met a friend who said, hey, would you, do you wanna sign up for this triathlon with me? She came from a family of triathletes and um, it was kind of like, she was so used to it, it was no big right. deal. And for me, it was a huge deal and I was really excited and I was really scared. And she said, I'll, I'll do it. I, I told her about my, you know, nervousness. I don't have a bike. I don't have a wetsuit. I don't. And she said, I'll just, I'll stick with you and I'll do the entire thing with you. It was just a Oh, nice. Um, that was a really memorable moment because 
Um, now just being in a position where I'm really, you know, working towards getting more women into yeah. cycling and sport, I think back to that moment and what, how much of an impact that had on me, somebody coming alongside me and being like, I'll just do it with you, you know, and encouraging me. So, um, from then on, it was like, I did that triathlon and I was hooked and I joined the, uh, university triathlon club and I you know, it just kind of like grew from there to longer and longer distances to maybe I could do a half Ironman, maybe I can do an Ironman to world championships in Kona and turning into, you know, like a very large component of my life. Right. Um, and alongside that, I had the opportunity to also work in the industry. So power bar and so, your, your um, it was the best of both worlds to be able to work in the industry and um, be pursuing sport as my passion and hobby um, and I kind of came to a crossroads so triathlon um, I got a little bit burned out it's <clears> a very, uh, I think upon moving to, I moved to California from Seattle and um, discovered mountain biking and I really was attracted to the vibe of mountain biking that I could still what, yeah what about it I could still go hard and I could but I met these people who are just so they're amazing riders mostly I call them like the shop groms they're all way younger than me but they were yes. so talented and they did not take anything seriously and yet they were such good riders and coming from like a really regimented, you know, triathlon is very type A. And I mean, totally. I'm type A, but I appreciated um, bringing more of like the joy of riding back into my life rather than- Yeah, like, there's like a training, looseness to it. Rather than like watts and heart rate and training schedule. Yeah. Um, and I felt like it was also good for me. So anyway, yeah. Uh, from that, I got invited so cycling kind of progressed and I started to dabble more in um, just in bikes in general. And I got an invitation to USA Cycling's um, talent, ID, talent ID camp in Colorado Springs. Yep. Um, and that was kind of an, a, a friend of mine, Mari Holden, who is an Olympic silver medalist cyclist, amazing yeah. athlete. She wanted me to come because she was like, she was helping run the talent ID camp and she thought I had talent that I should yeah. direct into road cycling. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to become a road cyclist. Um, and I went to the camp and, you know, we actually had a whole panel of ex pro female riders who kind of gave us the, the real story of what the life of a pro cyclist is like. And they really wanted us to understand that, you know, okay, you can expect to maybe make the salary of a 7-Eleven employee. If you do yep. really well, maybe you make manager level salary. Yeah. You know, really like you, what, it, what, if you got to really be honest with yourself about what is driving you to want this and you have to want it outside of any kind of other, you know. Totally. Motivation. Yeah. I feel like I could, that topic alone, I feel like I've been having a lot of conversations about and like, the women psych pro like road cyclists that like that could be like a 12 hour just like that could be like a week long symposium um on like motivation just like hardships and like a lot of the men on the other like on the corresponding men's team like don't understand i don't think like what the women go through to like pursue their dream um and I think I, like, I was really, I woke up to that a lot a couple of years ago. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I would ever put myself in that situation um, of like, I mean, of course, like, most of the women already have like full-time professional jobs too. They're like MDs or like PhDs. They're like super accomplished. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you're a badass. <laughs> Yeah, I have so much admiration and respect for yeah. people who decide to take that journey. And I kind of came to the conclusion at that at that moment I had a great new job offer with Goo 
And um, I just really felt like the way my path was going, it that lifestyle wasn't for me. I right. I didn't want. I don't respond well to pressure and having all my kind of all the pressure on needing to have results. I really enjoyed like having a career and a steady paycheck and then like getting to compete on the side and having that be something that is because of my passion and not because yeah. I depend on a paycheck for it. Um, so totally. yeah, that's, yeah, that was kind of a pivotal moment. And um, I chose to take the job and just kind of keep cycling as something that I um, love to do and uh, a way to grow community, a growing community and um, spend a lot of, you know, weekends kind of getting just my competitive. The phone keeps breaking uh, up on my end. Yeah. Oh, sorry. About I was like, that. your phone just keep the service or something keeps breaking up on my end. But um, so, you know, community, it seems like, and the people throughout the your cycling kind of career have kind of influenced, you know, where you've gone. And so like, where does that bring you now? Like if you could just talk a little bit about, um, you know, the race you co-founded um, and then, you know, we can segue into doing that, still doing all the things you love, building community, being a mom, all of these things. I think like you've got so many balls up in the air. It's just really impressive. And it kind of, I mean, it relates back to the, the, women professional like road cyclists like they're doing so much because like they have so many priorities and they're like hey it's worth it to invest time and make and have five priorities like I feel like women are just like yeah I can do it I'll do it I'm fine <laughs> like, it's it, I, I find that so interesting you know I look at not to bash like pro men cyclists because I, I think that's great but like they can devote their entire lives to one singular activity and then i i look at you know the flip side and the women they've got like a career or kids or they have these interests and they're also racing professionally and it's just like wow you that's i have so much respect for that um, so yeah if you could talk about you know how how you're building community now and you know juggling all the things that you're doing sure yeah so my husband ted and i co-founded um, Rooted Vermont, our gravel event, uh, which starts just down two miles down the road from our house. And we co-founded it upon moving to Vermont and seeing all the amazing terrain that we have for beautiful uh, off road cycling. It's yeah, it's there's a lot to show off about our state and especially our community. And that's why we named it Rooted. We just immediately moved here and felt very connected to a really special community. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I actually co-direct the race with my friend Kristen. So as two female race directors, we think a lot about how to increase women's participation in the sport. And we really kind of, you know, a lot of races are just are opening up entries for more women. And to us, that felt like a little bit of a PR move rather than stepping back and saying, well, what is really going to get more women on bikes before? That might, our, our event might be two or three steps ahead of meeting women where they really need to be met yes. in order to just equip them with skills and mindset and community and everything that they need to just hopefully bring them further along in their journey in cycling. Yeah. Um, so that's been a huge mission for us. We just hosted um, the Rooted Women's Clinic last last weekend or the weekend two weekends ago yeah um, nice over a hundred women from all over the country and it was super powerful and i the only did i lose you oh no no i was just trying to get the internet to work better you keep freezing so i was like oh maybe it's me Okay. I, have, I, I look like, looks like I, I should have good service, but um, yeah. yeah, the only, the only way we pull something like that off is because we have this, I think really unique community here. We had over yeah. 20 leaders and mentors and people contributing their time and energy to making it happen. And when it all came together, it's so powerful to see what happens. And 
Um, it was really cool to see people come back from our 2019 clinic. They were new. Yeah. Um, they were scared and nervous and they came back, they built communities in their, in their neighborhoods and they yeah. came back as leaders this time being able to teach others. And that was kind of one of the coolest takeaways for me is like seeing that progression after two years of where they are now. Yeah, that's so incredible. Like I was just helping out at Ned Gravel, like women's clinic. And it was so interesting. Like there were so many women that showed up and like same with yours. And I'm like, wow, I feel like, you know, a lot of like organizations like USA Cycling, I'm like, you're having a hard time getting women at these races. And I was like, it's people like you and like huge community advocates that are taking the right steps and like listening, providing, like meeting people where they're at, not just being like, I don't even know, like not just hoping they'll show up or marketing to them. It's like, don't market to women. Don't market to like marginalized groups, like meet them where they're at and help them. <laughs> like, And so it makes total sense that like, you're the perfect person for that. And like, you know, you've started this thing and like, it's, it'll just ripple into everyone else's communities. Um, so I think like, that's great. And our sports super lucky to have someone like you and, you know, Kristen to help with that. So I think that's, that's awesome that, that you're doing that. Thank you. Well, somebody, yeah. somebody said to me, it sounds like little Bella's for adults. And I was like, yeah. that's kind of what it is. Um, nothing like that exists. Like yeah. we have people who are 50 and 60 wanting to, learn uh, you know just getting into cycling and wanting to learn and where how can they go where do they go to develop those skills and to learn from others so it's really special to see like that you know cycling yeah. across the age spectrum is is still becoming more and more popular amongst women and to be able to kind of host and help each any anyone regardless of their age or or whatever um help them kind of further come further along in their cycle. Yeah. And so when is your, your race is beginning of August, right? Yeah. August okay. 1st, three okay. weeks. Okay. That's exciting. Oh my God. That is coming up. I was like, yeah, I think it's in my head. It was May. <laughs> it's July. <laughs> Shit. Um, yeah. So that's coming up. That's exciting. But you have been kind of all over the place traveling. So I would love, you know, how are you, how are you doing um, with all this travel? Like, you know, how do you do that? Direct a race, consult for these companies, stay fit, and, you know, manage a family. Um, well, <laughs> first and foremost. Do you sleep? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I sleep well because that's, like, number one most important to actually totally. the energy to get anything done. Um, I have an incredible partner. Ted is uh, more than pulls his weight in our household share of um, things that need to be done. And he's a real planner. Actually, I thought I was a planner and then I met him and he's always like five steps ahead of me. So I <laughs> actually think I'm working to keep up with him. He has like a, a capacity for a plate that is more full than most people I know. Um, and so I feel like together that is maybe why we've been able to kind of both have a plate yeah. and still function um yeah uh and i guess we both just have the mentality of like we want to say yes to a lot of fun thing who knows what this you know season in our life how long it will be where we get to travel and ride bikes and be in community right. and um honestly have a whole lot of fun so yeah take advantage of it and um it's just been, yeah, it's just been a ton of fun, like buying a van and deciding to like drive around to races with Hazel. And um, she, it's fun to see like, to see her expression because so many people like know her name when we are at events or um, yeah. in the community. It's just been a lot of fun. Do you, like when you, I guess like, I'm so curious. So like I am someone who, has chosen not to have children. I've never, I've never been someone that's like, yes, like that's just not my passion. That's not my life uh, path. Yeah. Um, but also like, I feel like, you know, when I see people with kids, I'm like, wow, like you, especially like people that are athletic, 
or that have tons of hobbies. I'm like, wow, like you must be so motivated um, to, I guess, like continue doing what you're doing and like still devote all of this time. So like, was there like a thought process, you know, like maybe even while you were pregnant or thinking about it, like, oh my God, how much is my life going to change after this? Like I would be nervous as hell um, to go from, I would, cause I like catastrophize and I'm super anxious. And so I would be like, oh my God, my life is going to be diapers and watching TV all day. And like, how did, what did that look like for you? It looked very similar to what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> I also can be anxious. And yeah. uh, there were many points in my pregnancy where I, I was consistently bringing up my anxiety so many times that Ted finally said, are you even excited to have a baby? And I, I was taken aback by that question because I thought, of course I'm excited. Why wouldn't I be yeah. excited? Like, but I, I have all these fears that we need to talk through. And those fears all really were about um, losing my identity and like wanting yeah. to make sure we were both on the same page about what life was going to look like after having a baby. And I needed him to, I needed him to like remind me that we were going to make strides to make it so that I felt like I could still be me. And that's, that was my biggest fear is like, yeah. I, I know what, um, really fills me as a person. And like, I needed to know that there was still going to be space for that. And totally. Yeah. I think so. totally. I think like in my head, I'm the person and the same thing is like with the, like with a dog, which has nothing, it is not birthed from me. I bought it, but <laughs> you, it was like, okay, because for some reason, like, I felt like I'm the caretaker of this thing, or like, you know, you, even though the child is like both of yours, I feel like I'm the person that's like, this isn't just my responsibility. Like, I want you to know that you're, you're equal part, like, this doesn't depend on me all the time. And so like, I think that would be something that mentally, I would need to have a conversation about that, like every single day. <laughs> <laughs> be like you're doing this right like this is this is a you thing too <laughs> i mean god like it's so I, I admire parents so much because the work is endless like it is never ending at 18 you're not just like all right see you later <laughs> Good luck. i still call my parents when i'm 33 <laughs> i do too <laughs> yeah, I'm like help me i don't know what i'm doing in my life <laughs> um yeah. so i mean like how, I mean, with travel, how do you do that? Like you're in a van, like you can't just leave a kid in a car. <laughs> Maybe you can, I don't know. I have a dog, uh, you can't do it. <laughs> we, I feel like one thing that has um, helped us to continue everything that we want to do is just trying to be creative in every realm. So whether yeah. that was um, with van life, figuring out, um, you know, we have a pack and play in the van and she can take her naps. And we're lucky to have an amazing community in a lot of areas in the country when we go to bike events where a friend really wants to watch Hazel or, That's um, awesome. or yeah, just help us. We've had a lot of people, they, like they say it takes a village, but that's yeah. really true. I mean, a lot of this couldn't be done without a lot of support. Yeah. Um, but then there's just a lot of like getting creative. Like yesterday we drove home from vacation and Ted dropped me off on the side of the road with my bike and I ride home so that when I get home, yeah. he can then go, he went to Tuesday night world. So a lot of yeah. um, creativity and our commuting, <laughs> dropping each other off for rides. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, those are some of the major. It's so things. nice. Like I love it, you know, I've met Ted just like briefly at some race in California, but it, like years ago um, when I worked at Specialized. But I think like it's so wonderful to find like a teammate and partner that like is so supportive of you. Like it is so, like such a great like symbiotic relationship. Um, and so I think that's just wonderful to have someone like that. Um, so it's great. And you know, it's super fulfilling for both of you. And like you, yeah teamwork the whole thing and I feel like Hazel 
just from what you've been saying is already like going to be programmed to be like some community builder. She's already <laughs> bringing the community together <laughs> pre like <laughs> pre being able to like do anything <laughs> other than just like be cute. <laughs> She's definitely an extrovert. It's fun to, she doesn't, we're lucky in that she doesn't seem to have stranger danger and she's used to being around a lot of new people and um, kind of just seems to roll with it. And I don't yeah. know if that's like nature or nurture. So whatever it is, I'm just, I, yeah. I'm happy that she's happy to be along for the ride, whatever we yeah. <laughs> decide to bring her along on. Um, and then before we go, like, do you have any advice either for, you know, cycling community writ large on like, hey, call like a call to action or just like, you know, expect like parents or, you know, expectant parents, like, hey, don't learn from experience, maybe learn from my mm -hmm. experience. I don't know about learn from my experience. I think the, <laughs> the biggest, um, because like, yeah, I guess I, sh I do share my experience so that if there's someone like me out there, I know there's yeah. different stories, but if there's someone like me out there, they maybe can hear them themselves in my story. Um, I think that just, I heard a lot of the narrative of like your life, you know, enjoy your riding now because you're having a baby and it's going to be all over soon or all these just uh, sometimes a negative, a negative narrative. Um, yeah. And it's been nothing but the opposite for us. And so I guess I just want people to hear that if they do are maybe trying to decide whether kids are for them or not. And to know that it doesn't have to be kind of, you don't have to be afraid necessarily of like when you, when you hear those negative things yeah. that there is another, another experience out there. That yeah. Different. There, there are alternate realities. I always think like, humans in general get stuck in like the this or that and we forget that there's like a myriad of possibilities that we're just like failing to look at or realize or um it's very easy to think you've got like one or the other and i don't think that's the case um so i am yeah. super thankful that you know you were able to join on this call um and if any i don't know if you still have registration open or if your events all sold out is it, it is all sold out. We'll oh, open registration November 1st. Oh, wow. And we're very excited. Um, next year we will be, we're a random selection, like lottery type system. So yeah. we will be 50% um, participation, male and female. And wow. we're very excited about that. That's so uh, cool. Yeah, That's so exciting. 1st. Yeah. I, one of the, like next year, so I'll have to come out and do it. I love, love, love Vermont. Um, so it's we a great area. Have you? Yeah, come visit. But thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Oh my God. I think in a different life, I would have lived in Vermont. Um, I'm from the East Coast, so maybe that's why. Um, but thank you so much. Um, and, you know, enjoy the rest of your day. Tell every, tell the fam I said hi. Um, and just kind of looking forward to seeing how your race goes and, you know, just the community you're building. So thank you so much for, you know, being a great ambassador to the cycling industry. Oh, thank you, Reese. Great to yeah. chat with you. Thanks so much. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. Bye, Laura. Bye-bye.